Hello, welcome, welcome everybody to our webinar. Today we are going to present our global monitoring solution for gas insulated switchgear. My name is Marco Piga, I'm CSR manager at Tekim Paltanova Group, I'm expert in global monitoring system. I'm connected from Bologna, Italy. Before we start, a few tips on go to webinar platform. During the presentation, your microphones will remain muted, but uh, feel free to do your question using the dedicated panel questions on GoTo platform. You can uh, start immediately and we will try to reply to your question after this presentation. If not doable, uh, you will receive a reply by email in the next uh, days. You will find also another panel on GoTo and Doubts. You can download uh, the PDF of the webinar and uh, some documentation as well. Video and presentation will be available also on our website under the Academy section in a couple of days. We will have around uh, 50 minutes of presentation and uh, some minutes at the end to reply to your questions. After a quick uh, introduction about Altanova Group, uh, we will have five different sections. Why monitoring of high voltage gas insulated switch gear, circuit breaker monitoring, partial discharge, SF6 monitoring, and uh, a fully integrated HMI. Nowadays, Altanova Group uh, is uh, formed by three different companies with the long experience in condition assessment technologies. These companies are ISA, Techim, and Intelliso. Uh, we can provide solution covering medium voltage and high voltage uh, applications as uh, reported in the example here be below. You have a current transformer, voltage transformer application and solution for transformer, medium voltage, high voltage cable, such as substation application, GIS, rotating machines, motors, um, switch gear, medium voltage switch gear relays, and overhead power line. As you can see here in these three pictures, we have three quarters. Two are located in Italy, one in Taino, not so far from Milan, another one in Bologna, and the third one in the USA, in Massachusetts, in Andover. We have also eight regional offices, are located in France, in Germany, in the Emirates, India, Singapore, another one in USA, Panama, and Brazil. Uh, we have also almost 100 distributors. So you have here the link. So you can uh, uh, check your local distributor in your region in your country. We have uh, internally uh, two, three uh, crew for um, service as service, service provider are located in Italy, in Germany, USA, and uh, even in India. And we have for each headquarter, even the R&D department for the competence, relative competence for online and offline uh, solution. Nowadays, Altanova Group uh, is composed by almost 130, 140 employees. Regarding Altanova solution for GIS, we have, uh, as you can see, let me switch on the pointer, a uh, testing instrument for offline test, partial discharge portable unit for uh, both offline and uh, online test, and uh, the topic of today, the integrated global monitoring system. You have here another link. You can download, download our um, last technical guide regarding GIS monitoring. So we can start looking to the first question, why monitoring of high voltage GAS? We know that uh, GAS um, is composed by several subsystems like uh, circuit breaker, instrument transformer, disconnector, earthing switch, bus part, and a lot of other minus electrical mechanical components. Well, why monitoring of GAS is so important? We will try to discover it in the next slides. Now I would like to discuss about GIS reliability and failures. Uh, GIS have uh, 
as you can see, attain a very high degree of reliability and availability. Nevertheless, uh, uh, failures, even in this, case, can, in this case, cannot be totally uh, excluded. And show by service experience and statistics, besides manufacturing problems, the facts may be in dust during transportation, installation, or uh, through the aging process. And such defects should be found as early as possible in order to avoid outages. Here, a graphic uh, representation of the main, the major components in a gas insulated switchgear, uh, starting from the LCC, so the local control cubicle, where we have the controlling part of the GIS and the natural link to uh, the substation. We have sp the spring mechanism as uh, shown here in the second picture, the circuit breaker part, cable termination, bus bar, current and water transformer, and disconnecting and hearthing. Here on the right corner, you can see the failure statistics according to the SIGRE working group A3.06, 1.39, 0 0.18, 0 0.18, both for current and water transformer, 1.84 for disconnecting earthing. These are the failures per 1,000 circuit break bay per year. And uh, if we calculate the cumulate failure, uh, we reach 0.75% of the failure per year. This is not a huge number compared with uh, other asset types. But uh, if we consider an expected lifetime of 40 years for a substation with GIS and with, for example, 20 bays, we can expect tens, more than 10, probably more than 20 failures during the lifetime of the GIS. Looking here to the types of the failure modes, we can recap all failures for major minor components in four different categories. We have the insulation failure with a 57% of probability. Then we have mechanical failures with 18% of probability. Then 13, the third category for the gas leakage, SF6 gas leak, plus uh, an, an additional 12% for other, other um, causes. On the right, we, we have seen the, the, the same statistic in the, the slide before. You have 0.75% of uh, the failure per year calculated to, from a, the entire population of more than 1,000 bays with the age less than 15 years old. Um, this statistics is um, in the report of the second international survey of um, high voltage JS service experience thanks to SIGRE working group. And uh, as you can see here on the graph, we are um, we have on the vertical axis the value rate and on the horizontal axis the age. We have an average of 0 0.75 here up to 15 years, but where um, we move from uh, 20, 25 and almost 30 years old GAS, the failure probability increase up to 5%. Now, uh, how we can mitigate the risk of the failure. We have basically two main strategies. From one side, we can uh, reduce the impact of the failure on the business value, or on the other side, increasing the mean time between failure. Again, on the left, what we can do is, for example, increase the GIS redundancy using, for example, a double bus bar system. And if we want to increase the mean time between failure or reduce the failure risk, we can perform diagnosis and monitoring to reveal critical failure mode in GIS. We have also some disadvantages. 
for example, if you want to using a double bus park system, uh, we have an increased cost of the GIS installation and even the complexity. And on the right, if we want to use monitoring strategies, the challenge in this case is to select a cost-effective approach, omitting overlapping methods. There are several methods. There are optical methods. There are a mechanical methods. There are a lot of at least 10 different methods. We have to choose the right mix of approach. And today we are focusing on selecting the right monitoring strategy to, to ensure the highest GIS reliability. And regarding this last point, the good news, news is that the many of the causes of the, the failures in the GIS, both mechanical or the electrical, failures can be uh, largely within the operator control. A complete monitoring system based on uh, partially charged SF6 and circuit breaker analysis and monitoring avoids the most part of the GIS failures due to basically to lack of maintenance, aging, and again, electrical failure or overloading, for example. If you remember the pie we've seen before with the failure statistic, with 57% uh, of the installation failure, 18, 13, and 12, with this approach, we can cover more than 80% of the incoming failures. And last but not the least, uh, even the a complete monitoring system helps the GIS operators to increase profitability, reliability in general, and even the safety of the GIS fleet. And this is, a, this is exactly what we have to, to achieve even with our global monitoring system. In this slide, you can see the list of the parameters that we can be monitored by our, our system. That's in this webinar, we decide to call it GISNOVA. Uh, GISNOVA is a modular and a configurable monitoring system that can be also be combined with the, according to the customer requirements. We can start discussing about circuit breaker monitoring. Breaker mechanism failure is one of the major cases of GIS failures. Online monitoring of mechanical and electrical parameter in the circuit breaker uh, prevents such failures. And so let me say that in addition with the, the, the circuit breaker monitoring, GISNOVA can monitor also the hearthing switch and disconnector, more or less with the same approach, in order to increase the reliability and the safety for the entire GIS. Then we have another model. This is for partially charged monitoring, where incipient faults into GIS, uh, such as, uh, for example, loose connections, voids, metallic uh, particles, protrusion, can be taken under control. The last model is a SF6 leakage monitoring. That uh, through this model we can provide a real-time SF6 leakage monitoring and reporting, and we can help utilities to prevent failures due to the SF6 uh, leakage, for example, and uh, we can also help the customer to comply with environmental regular, um, regulations. So we can move now to, to the, the first model, circuit breaker monitoring. Uh, why is circuit breaker monitoring? Uh, circuit breaker are uh, highly critical components to the power protection system. And um, maloperation of the breakers is one of the most common root cases of failure. Um, Reliable conditions uh, uh, are even required after a long period of uh, inactivity. Um, as you can see here, Circuit breaker mechanical system remain in a static state for extended periods of time, and uh, this is not acceptable. So reliable conditions are required even after a long period of inactivity. Normally, uh, the maintenance of the the circuit breakers is performed on uh, regular time intervals. 
Um, as I reported here, we could say that uh, time one and time two, we can perform some offline tests. But in the between, we cannot exclude issues for or, or failures. Uh, this is due, for example, to uh, the number of operations occurring between uh, the maintenance cycles, or uh, in some cases due to um, internal inspections or intrusive internal inspection that can introduce contaminants or other other elements. The mechanical you can see here in this animation, the mechanical system of the circuit breaker is uh, consists in multiple moving parts that are normally working together. With a stored energy system to activate the physical opening and the closing of the main contacts. And this design can vary between uh, models, but the majority of the breaker's failures both minor, major and minor, failures can be caused to a malfunction of one of or more components within this uh, uh, mechanical, this operating chain. And uh, it can be difficult to detect this behavior through um, a unique use of uh, offline testing procedures. Talking about monitoring, so the implementation of uh, online monitoring allows parameters to be recorded in real time, not only in time one and time two, under actual and real operating condition. Then even a waveform analysis of the main contacts, trip coils, transducers is provided in order to evaluate and to understand many of the breakers, vital operation parameters, such, such for example, degradation of the breaker's lubrification, integrity of the trip coils, problem in the operating mechanism, as well as slow operating times. And this offers many advantages over offline testing because we are looking to the breaker, fun um, breaker functionalities under real working condition. Here an example of uh, sensor installation to detect, for example, the, the open call behavior. As you can see on the left, we have uh, a schematic of the sensor installation, in this case, our current transformer that um, must be put on the coil or the protection relay. And uh, this sensor action are connected to the acquisition board. Uh, several channels are available. And uh, in general, uh, and, and on the right, you can see an example of the current profiles that the acquisition system is capable to capture using this kind of sensor. In general, in faulty condition, the, the circuit breaker, breaker parameters are become outside the OEM's recommendation. For example, shows so deviating profiles. If you look to these profiles, for example, because they require more time to complete to complete the, the changing status, or a common call current stays for a longer time, or the velocity is lower than the nominal. And this is example the the current profiles are analyzed by the system and compared to the nominal ones in order to raise an alarm if something is going wrong. For example, if the time is longer than, than the expected value. Or like in this case, to detect the open and close time measurements, you have the measurement that in this case is taken through the open and close command and the status of the auxiliary contacts of the breakers. These values are needed to, in order to properly evaluate the time, the time delayed during the, an, oper, an opening or a closing maneuver. On the right, more or less equivalent to the, the graph you've seen before, you have an 
on the on the top here the feeder current and on the bottom the contact status for the open coin open call command close call command and etc other types in this slide you can see other types of profiles that can be acquired by and analyzed by the system for example the travel movement profile and during uh, an event typically uh, a close or an open operation an entire set of this waveforms are acquired and analyzed in order to identify uh, issues or values in general outside OEM's recommendation and in, the, in this case the system is capable to calculate and raise an alarm or several alarms here you can see the acquisition unit dedicated to the circuit breaker monitoring the main feature of this unit is a very as the possibility to have continuous monitoring if the installation is very simple you have 19 inches rack mounted is capable to generate and calculate uh, automatic alarms this draw is a, um, has a um, modular configuration so, so you can choose the electronic boards according to the customer and the project needs and uh, the the units has then uh, several dry contacts embedded the main parameters that we can um, handle with this unit are listed on the on the right we have the breaker status the open and close time the pull disc discrepancy for current profile and i square t the profile of the um, the current of the motor peak or the full current or the motor current and other other parameters that are essential to understand uh, the health status of the breaker other measurements are available um, according to the configuration of the unit for example we can acquire even the battery voltage or the c power supply voltage even the, um, the heater current in the same system we can even integrate ff6 density measurements and calculate arm alarms like uh, remaining days to refill or, or lockouts data the data acquired are processed locally and can be exported through several digital protocols but even through the embedded dry contacts in this picture you can see the, the three major parts of the units on the right here you have the analog and the digital inputs that are connected to the the contacts or the the sensor we have the dry contacts here that can be connected directly to the substation SCADA or the fiber optic and the power supply part to be connected uh, to other system, to other subsystem or to the central units. Yeah, um, a schematic showing the connection of uh, several acquisition units, in this case are installed close to the local um, the LCC and um, the fiber optic in the double ring configuration that connect each acquisition unit to a central a central unit here you can see two different types of uh, data visualization the the com trade here on the left where you can perform uh, the waveform analysis and uh, for example and um, on the right the um, information relevant to alarms and trends that are available on the, um, centralized software as i said measurements and alarm can be also exchanged with a third party SCADA with uh, for example ic61 a50 104 dmp3 and other protocols that are available on demand this is was the part relevant uh, the real an introduction about the secret breaker uh, features and uh, functionalities this is 
this part I'm going to present is relevant to partial discharge monitoring. Good. In this in this picture, you can see um, a simplification of the electrical field in, in a GIS. You have here the inner conductor, the high voltage conductor, and uh, um, this uh, the outer is the enclosure, and not it's a sorry for this table is not connected here, but it's relevant to the external enclosure and the uh, SF6 inside. And by by design, um, the the electrical feed in the, the GAS is uh, homogeneous, and thanks to the insulation properties of the SF6 sub gas, no PD should be observed in this case in the ideal case. But if we imagine to have an imperfection, as reported here, so a small red triangle for example, attached to the HV conductor. Well, in this case, the electrical field will change as reported in the picture and the, the red lines. And, um, and the, we will face an increase electrical field strength in the small area here around the imperfection. And uh, in some cases, it could locally exceed the breakdown field strength of our SF6 insulation material and accordingly can lead to part of the charge. But more, more in general, uh, typical defects in GAES are due to not only imperfection on high voltage conductor, uh, but even for, um, due to moving particles, to protrusion, to other particles on insulation, insulating surface, floating electrodes, forgotten tools, or loose or not floating electrodes, or voids in the solid insulation, and even for the lamination. Here you can see that according to the knowledge rules of uh, the partial discharge diagnosis and service, according uh, hence to the CGRE uh, TF15.11, typical PD um, are the, in GIS are the following, as you can see even here on the scheme. We can have protrusion on the enclosure or protrusion on the high voltage conductor here. We can have floating electrodes as reported here on the right, or free moving particle as reported in the SF6 in this case. And the, as I said, particle, for example, fixed on the insulation surface. Good. Uh, when we have PD, we have energy. This is the PD source and the these are the different type of energy, the physical effects. And we have various forms of energy. For example, we have, uh, we can have light, we can have uh, acoustic waves, we have high frequency electromagnetic uh, waves, but we have also chemical components, sap components as well, and uh, heat. And um, this process causes a, a degradation of GIS components and aging mechanism that can lead sooner or later to a failure. Uh, the good news in that and is that uh, energy can be can be measured using several mechanisms, several approaches and techniques. For example, through optical measurement, mechanical or electrical. And for this particular case, for continuous monitoring, we will focalize our attention to the ultra high frequency method, who has shown uh, multiple benefits in terms of uh, sensitivity and availability 
um, mainly compare with the other, with the acoustic and the optical method. And in particular, we will see the four main steps of the monitoring system chain. The detection, the acquisition process, the processing, and or arming and, and visualization. About the detection, um, we will have a look on the main part of the chart sensors that are applicable for GIS monitoring. The major sensor types are the following pre existing internal UHF sensor, unshielded exposed spacers or sensor for unshielded exposed spacer or shielded spacer with small dielectric aperture or actually the epoxy, epoxy spacer at cable termination. We have even special sensor for inspection window or the electric glass windows that can be present on the GIS. In the following slides, you can see some picture starting from the pre-existing internal UHF sensor. And you can see here on the left or some other example here on the right, where the majority of the motor GIS are provided with internal UHF sensor. And uh, we can connect our acquisition system, our DEQ system, with the totality of this kind of internal sensor that can bring a lot of benefits, even in terms of sensitivity and ratio between noise and, and signal. This is the preferred solution where we have internal sensor to use it. But in absence of uh, this kind of sensor, of internal sensor, we have a dedicated solution, dedicated sensor. This is a, the, our horn antenna that can be placed on the spacer and not shielded GAS exposure installator as reported here in the, on the picture. The same sensor can be used even with the shielded spacer when we have a small dielectric as reported here inside the, the green circle and um, on the on the spacer so we can use as report on the right the same horn antenna and we will have uh, we will see more in detail later on this other component that you that is connected to directly to the sensor the the same sensor is applicable even at cable termination uh, so even in this case we can use an antenna in this position and in some cases, we can use a standard HFCT that uh, is connected ar um, around the, the ground link, as reported as reported here. There are different type of uh, sensor. There are other type of sensor, but I, I mentioned the the, the principal ones. Uh, the last one uh, I want to mention is the um, another type of antenna. The, the, that is tailored and designed to be applied on the glass windows, gelatin glass windows. You have an example here and uh, two installation here on the bottom left, where different diameter even of this sensor can be adapted uh, to a different size of um, the electric window. On the here on the acquisition side, um, the Tanova system implements a dedicated unit. This is called a frequency shifter, uh, with the scope to to adapt adapt the common frequency content of PD pulses pulses in GIS. This is normally in the range of the gigahertz, and in the most convenient frequency spectrum. With the gigahertz, we have a very high attenuation of the signal, a physical attenuation along the measurement chain. Um, frequency shifter is used to um, sort of envelope of the gigahertz fingerprint of the waveforms to shift the gigahertz um, the gigahertz uh, uh, frequency to a few tens of uh, maximum few tenth, tenths of megahertz, keeping the the pulse shape that can be used later on 
for the data processing. And the frequency shifter is normally connected to, to the internal or the external sensor and, um, and from the other side to the acquisition unit. And thanks uh, to this approach, we can use signal cables up to 100 meters long. This can ensure a compact and uh, a cost-effective installation layouts. About the acquisition unit, as you can see here, the acquisition unit is composed by um, electronic boards with a wide bandwidth electronic boards with a power supply here connector with a port for communication and synchronization over Ethernet and uh, in this mode there are up to four independent partially charged channels with the bandwidth that start from 16 kilohertz as a standard 30 megahertz and with the frequency shifter we can reach frequency up to three gigahertz these are the common frequency that uh, are used for uh, GIS detection with antennas. Um, this electronic board has a sampling frequency of, of 125 mega sample per second and ratio, resolution of 12 bits. Here we have an, an example of the acquisition box because multiple acquisition board can be mounted together in a protective enclosure uh, for both indoor and outdoor application or an industrial rack. So we have basically four PD channels for each board, 40 channels in total for each uh, box. The channels can reach to 140. Uh, when we saw uh, this uh, kind of acquisition unit on 42 units rack, um, the system, both of 424, 20, 240, sorry, uh, channels, we can perform continuous monitoring. So the system is capable to perform continuous acquisition and monitoring, and even simultaneous acquisition on, uh, on trigger events. The system is capable to be synchronized in the range of 0 0.1 at up to one kilohertz. So it can be utilized even during the GIS commissioning with an external power source and the frequency far from the nominal one, 50 or 60 Earth. We have the possibility to, um, to utilize 66, IP66 or 68 for outdoor application enclosure and uh, with extended temperature range uh, from minus 40, 45 up to plus uh, 60 or 70. And uh, on the acquisition unit, we have embedded uh, OPC UA62541, um, 61A50, and dry contracts, contact um, protocols. So we have a multi protocols device. And uh, here you can see an example of, lay, um, of a layout using four acquisition boxes connected to each other by a fiber optic to, to the central unit. So we can reach easily uh, configuration with hundreds of PD channels. Looking to the processing, um, just uh, a quick um, step back for the definition of parts of the chart. We know that partially charged according to the definition um, of the IC standard 6270 are localized electrical discharge that only partially breach the insulation between conductors and uh, which can or cannot occur others into the conductor. Uh, on the bottom, you um, can see uh, a common way to, to represent PD. Um, this is the phase result PD pattern. Um, and uh, on the horizontal axis, you have the phase angle, on the vertical axis, the amplitude, and um, uh, even different colors according to the number of pulses acquired per each cycle. Um, it's important to mention that based on the DPD pattern, uh, the defect identification can be, can be carried out since 
that, uh, as you can see in this animation, different uh, defect typologies uh, forms uh, different PD pattern shapes. Identification is always um, is is a crucial factor in the in the PD assessment in general and even in the GIS application. Um, in general, we we have to consider that uh, normally internal PD are more and more dangerous than surface PD. Here, yeah, the second category, and again, uh, uh, surface PD are more and more dangerous back to the corona discharge. Uh, However, uh, when we move to this um, ideal case or the theory and move to from labs to real cases, diagnosis is normally not possible with, with standard device. As you can see here on the, on the graph, high level of background noise is in online monitoring can hardly affect the results uh, and uh, apparently only noise is, is visible. This is our main innovation. We start more than 20 years ago to develop a method to reject the noise for online um, application um, uh, to be able to identify the partially charged source in, in, in online conditions. Um, this is uh, the again the fundamental innovation. So for each pulse acquired, we create through a math um, mathematical calculation. Um, we calculate other two parameters, uh, equivalent time and equivalent frequency. We create another map. The name of this map is classification map. In the classification map, you can identify and we can clusterize the phenomenon. And we can easily identify um, different cluster, different group of point, color red in this case in black, red and in blue. And after this class, uh, class, um, classification and clusterization process, the system will, is able to rebuild the, the PRPD partner only for each separate homogeneous group of points. And uh, this is for the red one, for the, um, the black, the red, and the blue one. And this, is approach, this approach is very useful when we have to test or monitoring in GIS because multiple PD sources can be even identified below the background noise. Uh, GISNOVA, our model for PD monitoring in GIS, implements the TF map technology and analysis, and um, which allows uh, an effective separation uh, of even different multiple sources. Here, just to give you an example of the processing capability in GIS application, here we have, after noise rejection and PRPD pattern, that shows uh, some points. Here is the equivalent time frequency map, where we can identify two main cluster. One is the black one, where we have uh, an HP protrusion, type of the the fact that can be identified using even, even the database and the fuzzy logic algorithm and the red one uh, with the floating electrode so in this case we have two component sources of pd the system is capable to separate different phenomena and gives um, different alarms in the, in this in this case or in other case when we have multiple uh, pd activities uh, some additional info about pd we have here uh, a typical PD pattern for protrusions. Uh, protrusions again are caused by bad assemblies, stretching and um, of parts during service life operation of contacts, and etc. There are two types: protrusion on high uh, HV conductor, uh, the more dangerous due to the high field, or uh, or can be on the enclosure. Or we have even a here yeah, pattern relevant to free moving particles. The free moving particles are one of the most frequent and most dangerous defects inside the GIS uh, due to a, a lot of uh, reason. They provoke a distortion of the electrical field. As we said, we can lead to, to PD. Even charged particles float and can move. Uh, due to the electrostatic force uh, inside the, um, the compartments and can, and can be provoke uh, um, failures in, uh, in, uh, in, few, in few weeks. 
this is uh, we have 10 minutes left uh, just a brief introduction about uh, the sf6 monitoring um, talking about sf6 in gis ssf uh, gives uh, uh, basically the electrical insulation in uh, in, um, in gis and in the breaker compartment even the arc quenching capability but this capabilities are strictly related to the SF6 gas density. Um, for, this, uh, for this reason, gas monitoring is uh, primarily used to make sure that a sufficient quantity of SF6 gas um, is, uh, is present, uh, is provided to meet the, the, the requirements of the OEMs and um, GAS um, functionalities in order to avoid um, unexpected failures. Secondly, um, GAS uh, SF6 monitoring can be used is used to optimize the maintenance strategy. And uh, last but not the least, uh, as a third point, um, SF6 monitoring is uh, useful to satisfy even the environmental. Uh, rules about uh, SF6 uh, uh, leakage control. The main features of the gas density monitoring system is to provide a permanent output signal that can be used for trendings, for example, uh, about uh, diagnostic requirements and for the threshold alarms. We have two types of thresholds uh, to level. The first is the warning thresholds with, um, to inform that um, the gas has reached uh, a low level of density. And the second typically is a control signal used to block the switch gear when the density reached the minimum density needed to ensure the right uh, and equipment operation. To, to reach the second, the, the second threshold, so there are several technologies that uh, includes, for example, um, pressures of switches, um, gas monitoring with the reference gas, temperature compensate, um, pressure goods, or a sensor to, um, for the, to measure the density, the direct density measurement. We normally use SF6 density sensor in, uh, in our in our system, uh, we can have several type of system. This is an example with uh, uh, some sensor provided by uh, yeah, Vika Traffic Visola, and we normally are in charge for the system integration of this kind of sensor. It can be analog, digital sensor. In this case, the measurement is taken not um, similar with the discussion we had with circuit breaker secret breaker so uh, but uh, is taken on periodic basis uh, after a few ten of seconds or every some minutes um, yes. so in this case not related to an open or a close a close commands or an event in this case we can create a trend for example um, all SF6 uh, sensor are connected to a gas um, hub an example of the gas hub with the IP66 or 68 again protection degree. This is capable to collect up to 64 sensor. Uh, in this case, other design are, are available. Um, we have connection through fiber optic or Ethernet to a central unit, or the SF6 hub can communicate to the directly to a sample station SCADA. Uh, we normally transmit uh, instantaneous pressure values, uh, the leakage values, the trends, and uh, even the alarm prediction. If requested, we can even uh, um, offer, we can even communicate and elaborate the dew point calculation and values for the humidity. Here an example similar to the, the previous ones of uh, an entire um, SF6 monitoring system with 256 sensor 
um, every every hub uh, is equipped uh, even with a local memory and processing capability, web server, and uh, and other features. We are at the end of this presentation with the, the last part relevant to the um, the integrated architecture, the um, the integrated HMI. Um, G, as you can see, we have, uh, as we said, a security breaker or a disconnect or ethnic switch monitoring, partially charge monitoring, or SF6 monitoring. We can have a different type of sensor um, here for the circuit breaker or antennas for PT and uh, density or um, pressure sensor installed on the GAS. We can um, acquire locally through um, GIS monitoring hub that is normally installed close to the GIS and uh, again with the onboard data storage capability so the data can be uh, visualized and uh, with, a, with a common laptop for example using uh, the embedded web interface or um, the PD apps can be connected uh, to, the, to the central unit we can have all the information. Here we can see two example of um, all layouts. The first one is distributed architecture. When we have several GIS monitoring hub, uh, that can be with only partially char or a combination of partially char SF6 or a secret break and functionalities. Um, the char connected through fiber optic to the central unit or um, on the bottom, a centralized architecture um, when, uh, where all the sensors are uh, centralized, are connected to the central unit where we install even all the acquisition units needed to guarantee the um, monitoring system performances. Um, in the central unit, uh, here you have an example of a 19 inches rack cabinet that contains the server, the software, uh, watchdog, watch uh, we can have UPS, we have a full redundant uh, hard, um, hard drives and power supply to configuration. This is for, to ensure um, the maximum reliability. Um, we have a monitor, a printer, a keyboard, mouse, everything needed to uh, our operator. This configuration is available not only on the physical server, but is available even in the virtual machine environments that can be installed in existing um, hardware. And the same, the same solution is available on, even uh, um, as a cloud service. We integrate uh, self-diagnosis in the, in the system. Cabinets are even the rack are temperature controlled, can be installed even um, outdoor. And we have um, 61A50 protocol, uh, 104 OPC UA, DMP3, and many other protocols available on this on this system. The last part, just to share with you some uh, pages of the full integrated web-based um, HMI. Here in the example, you have the home page um, with the, the customer decide to have a multiple base home page so multiple pages are, uh, pages are reporting on the on the dashboard and uh, we have the aggregate status of the alarms related to the as you can see here the pd activity the gas sf6 alarm or the circuit breaker alarm we have on the right the parameter three where Every parameter acquired by the system is available to be visualized in the graph form or in a table, and the customer can decide to select one or multiple parameters independently. And here we have an overall alarm. This is another another example with um, a single a single bay dashboard. Again, we have um, CB SF6 FPD alarm and uh, shortcuts to display graphs of the alarms or the or about the parameters. Uh, on the previous two uh, slides, we have seen the aggregate uh, indication of the 
of the alarms, but looking here, we have the alarm details starting from the left. We have, for example, for each phase alarm, according to the close time, I square T, the closing velocity, uh, the open velocity, and all the heater current and SF6 density, etc. According to the models that are integrated in the system, and on the right we have uh, the value, the real-time values of the SF6 density in this case, or the feeder current, the breaker status, and uh, and etc. Embedded and customizable, uh, customizable graphs are available um, for all parameters. In this example, you have four graphs for the peak um, peak motor current, open time, open velocity, and the heat current. You can have for partially charged SF6 uh, and etc. Here you have uh, the table view of um, the SF6. Um, and uh, the current value, the alarms, the first level, and then the second level of alarms for the SF6, the refill level, and the lockout alarms. And you can even visualize the um, the trends, the individual trends for the SF6 sensor. Every parameter and uh, threshold can be set in the dedicated page. If you have the privilege to do this, the power user or admin privilege, and uh, you can even have a look on the waveform analysis with the country view uh, feature that is integrated in the system. Surely you have all the alarms list, you have the possibility to filter according to the event time, uh, event type, location, timestamp, and etc. Gentlemen, we are at the end. Sorry, took a few minutes more about our um, our discussion. This is our closing and and um, last slide. We start um, our presentation discussing about strategies to mitigate risk about uh, about GIS and uh, thanks to the um, global monitoring system based on SF6 monitoring, circuit breaker, and PD, we can have um, a better visibility of the status of uh, the GIS. We can reduce the failure. We can face with the 80% of the failure modes. We can have a better understanding of, uh, in general, the risk as uh, key factors, let me say, to, to, improve, uh, to improve our mitigation strategies. This is the this is the hand. Thanks a lot for your attention. These are um, the main um, the main uh, uh, my contacts. Uh, feel free to to reach me for any further clarification or information you might require. And um, I hope to see you soon. Please uh, even check our newsletter or the website for the coming webinars. And let's try to read, uh, if we have just a couple of minutes to read some couple of questions. Um, I apologize in advance for not having the time to read all of your inquiries. Um, we will get back to you in the, in the next days individually. And uh, let me switch and start reading a couple of questions. Okay, okay. The, the first one is the, the following. Are the performances of the PD system related to the voltage, to the rated voltage of the GIS? Okay, well, um, no, uh, the, the short answer is no. Uh, the long answer is that uh, the PD activity, the PD inception is um, is correlated to the electrical fit and not to the, the voltage level. And uh, if we uh, assume that uh, by design, the, the electrical fit in um, 150 or 420 kV GIS are, can be comparable, we can even state that the PD monitoring performances are not related to the voltage, but uh, only to the imperfections 
than um, we might have inside uh, inside the GAS. Okay. Uh, I hope I reply to your question. And second and the last question is the following. Uh, can we detect a PD coming from uh, from the cable termination? Okay, uh, regarding this question, um, let me make quickly two, two, considera uh, two considerations. Um, the first one um, is uh, related to the type uh, and the positioning of the sensor along the GAS. Um, PD, the PD generating the cable uh, have uh, um, normally different uh, fingerprint and uh, frequency content, content. And, um, and according to the different monitoring system designs, uh, PD in cable can be detected or not detecting using UHF sense. Uh, in any case, it can be excluded for, if required using, as um, we, we have seen quickly before, uh, the um, TF map, the, the filter method that we, we have seen before. Uh, second consideration, just to close, um, it's not oriented to, it's not related to the monitoring system, but basically to the customer needs. So, if I mean that, if required, we can integrate a different kind of sensor, normally HFCT, on the cable termination to control the PD activity of the cable termination, and um, and for example, um, to the portion of the cable connected to a generator or transformer or another asset um, connected to the same cable. I hope to reply in this case. Again, uh, thanks, uh, thanks you all for your attention uh, to um, having attended to our webinar today and I uh, hope to, to see you soon. Have a nice day, uh, thanks again.